Here is a quick overview of the last four parameters of a Fusion 360 project. The other parameters come from a project we did together during a recent talk, the screw gear. Another also recent talk consisted in modeling hyperboloids. I propose today to model a hyperboloidal gear by combining the result of these two presentations, the screw gear and the hyperboloid study. A screw gear is made up of a cylinder around which the teeth are wound. A hyperboloidal gear consists of a hyperboloid around which the teeth wrap. It seems coherent to me to consider that the other properties are common to both types of gears. In this model that I present to you, the cylinder diameter of the screw gear corresponds to the hyperboloid diameter in its center, that is to say in its narrowest part. The modeling of the hyperboloid in progress is similar to the previous talk. In the first sketch which is in progress I draw the hyperboloid profile with a spline connecting some sampled points. The dimensions allowing to place correctly these few points are the result of a parametric function. It is not very complicated to calculate with a good knowledge of analytical geometry. If you want to know more about hyperboloids, I recommend the excellent visual presentation of OT Vinta which contains good geometrical explanations. The first sketch containing the profile of the hyperboloid is finished. Now it is the turn of the second sketch. It contains the contact point of the pitch circle obtained by projection from one of the sketches of the screw gear. On a gear with an involute tooth profile, the contact point is at the intersection of the pitch circles. I then draw a contact line that sits at its center on the projected point. It will be used as a guide rail to wrap the gear teeth around the hyperboloid. Once the sketches are completed, the hyperboloid is obtained by revolving the profile drawn in the first sketch. I did not anticipate an axial hole in the center of the hyperboloid. Never mind, I use the sketch of the screw gear to make this hole using the extrude feature. I am now modeling the teeth of the hyperboloidal gear. I use the sweep feature with the type, path plus guide rail. The tooth profile is taken from the sketch of the screw gear. The path is the axis of the hyperboloid. The guide rail is the contact line. Since the tooth profile lies on the plane in the center of the hyperboloid, the sweep feature must be performed twice, once in each direction. I add a fillet to the root of the resulting tooth. I complete the modeling of this first hyperboloid of our gear by applying a circular pattern of the last three features, the two sweep features and the fillet feature. The circular pattern is applied as many times as the desired number of teeth. The first wheel of our hyperboloidal gear is finished. Boom. Color change. What happened? As I was starting the second hyperboloid, Fusion 360 crashed. I restarted the modeling again, but I did the cutting while keeping the original capture. Fusion 360 assigns a color to all the bodies of each component of a project. But it seems that this color assignment is random. Let's move on. The first sketch of the second hyperboloid is being drawn. Not surprisingly, its modeling is similar to that of the first hyperboloid. I leave you in its company with two minutes of music.
I finish this with a circular pattern, and the second wheel of our hyperboloidal gear is complete. Let's give some visibility to what we have achieved so far. The hyperboloids are still not meshing properly. Be patient, I'll take care of it right away. I start with the first one which I rotate. I had already done this with the wheels of the screw gear. It's the second one's turn. The wheels are now positioned so that their teeth mesh properly. The interesting stuff can finally start, this is my favorite part, the part where I play with the parameters. In the case of the hyperboloid, the most fun aspect is to lengthen its line of contact. This enhances its particular shape. The drawback is that the gear teeth seem to interfere significantly. I had already noticed the interference of the smooth hyperboloids in the previous study. The more the hyperboloids differ, the worse the interference, which is perhaps one of the reasons why most examples of hyperboloidal gears that can be found on the internet are composed of two identical hyperboloids. I now extend the contact line very significantly. Fusion 360 is put to the hard test. It is not able to rebuild the entire gearing after this parameter change. I go back to the initial values. I conclude this presentation by briefly comparing the wheels of the hyperboloidal gear with those of the screw gear. When the contact line is of reasonable size, the meshing of a hyperboloidal gear is perfect. I took some time to tweak the parameters to remove the interference on a long line contact gear. Here is the final result. Thank you for your attention.